Hello, and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Our very special friend of the family and ATP regular guest will be on in just a second. But first, I want to remind you all out in ATP land to please subscribe now using your cell phone. It's absolutely for free. You can sign up by simply opening a blank text message and sending the word truth in the message box and address it to 88202. When you push send, you'll be signed up for free. It'll take about four to five seconds. We never charge for content. So that very special guest I was alluding to is Robert Spencer. Good morning to Robert. He is the founder of uh, Jihad Watch. He's written 22 best-selling books. He is the nation's best-selling author and expert on jihad in the United States and around the world. He's the scholar on the subject. Welcome back, Robert. Always good to talk to you, Barry. Thank you. Well, let's get right into it. I have spent the last four or five hours reading Jihad Watch, uh, which I normally do, but in preparation today, you had some astounding reporting in the last couple of days. Let's start with this person, Zara Billu, um, from the speech that she made in front of the American Muslim for Palestine's 14th annual conference in Chicago. Now, the media ignored uh, her commentary, but you didn't, and thank you for calling that to our attention. She made a horrible speech linking Islamophobia and Zionism. She said, Zionist organizations want to ban all Muslims and all kinds of other things. I mean, she literally says that the audience should oppose fascists and oppose even the polite Zionists. And the polite Zionists are people that support the ADL, uh, the campus Jewish organizations, Jewish Federation, synagogues, and so on. She said, all American Jews are your enemies. So Robert, I could go on and on and on. You quoted extensively from her horrific speech. Um, who is she? And why should she care about what she says? And then I want to ask you, why are you the only one reporting this? Barry Zahra Ballou is the chapter leader of the San Francisco chapter of the Council on American Islamic Relations, which is the leading Islamic advocacy group in the United States and a group that the Justice Department has established as ties to Hamas. Now, the Council on American Islamic Relations accordingly is uh, deeply inveterately anti-Israel. And also because we're talking about hardline uh, Sharia adherent Muslims, then it's very likely that many, if not most of them, have imbibed the anti Semitism that is deeply embedded in the Quran and the example of Muhammad. So Zahra Balu comes out with this speech. It's interesting to note, actually, that uh, it's gotten very little coverage, as you have pointed out, but I have not been the only one who reported on it. The Middle East Media Research Institute did so, and several others, the Jerusalem Post, and so on. And uh, what's noteworthy is that she is now taking a sabbatical, which <laughs> indicates that the Council on American Islamic Relations care is feeling the heat. And they should be feeling the heat from this because even the ADL, which is very far to the left and has always been on the side of care and on the side of the idea that there is some kind of an Islamophobia in American society, which she was talking about at the American Muslims for Palestine conference. Even they found her speech a bridge too far and uh, denounced it, asked her for an apology and so on. So it's interesting that they're taking her out of the limelight for a while, hoping that this is all going to blow over. But what she's really done is reveal the deep rooted Islamic anti-Semitism that all too many Muslims in the United States hold to, that is based on the Quran, which says among many other things about the Jews, that they're the worst enemies of the Muslims. That's chapter five, verse 82. Well said, and thank you again for publicizing this because the mainstream media doesn't consider this newsworthy, I guess. So <laughs> they're, they're, yeah, truly. So the White House has just really stepped in it this week, and now it's getting worse uh, because the president's horrific commentary on the winter of COVID has now been reflected by White House spokespeople. They are saying, we are intent on not letting Omicron disrupt work and school for the vaccinated. You've done the right things. 
For the unvaccinated, you're looking at a winter of severe illness and death for you, your families, and the hospitals. I mean, they're quoting Biden, who said that a couple of days ago, word for word. It's like the Black Plague is striking down Americans by the tens of thousands. And this is while vaccines are now being said to cause all kinds of problems and health side effects that were never mentioned before. So here's my question, Robert. If the vaccine doesn't prevent COVID and three vaccines, you know, vaccine one, two plus booster don't prevent COVID, why the ominous prediction from the president? Could he be hoping that millions do get sick and die? You know, Barry, I hate to say this, but I really do actually think that they are hoping for that because it would be vindication for the White House. The White House has said that you'll be all right if you get vaccinated. Now, as time goes by and more vaccinated people get COVID, that is proven to be not the case, but they're dug in now. And so they've just, they, they feel as if they have no choice but to double down and say, well, it would be a lot worse if you hadn't been vaccinated, which is a completely unproven and unprovable proposition. But ultimately, the only thing that will prove them right now in all their dire predictions is if there is a winter of mass illness and death. So we're in a very peculiar position where an American administration that should be caring for the American people has actually painted itself into a corner and is hoping that millions of Americans are going to die so that they will be proven correct in what they have been telling us all this time. What a horror story. And, you know, I, I'm an NFL football fan. I don't know if you are. And there's a requirement in the NFL that everyone gets vaccinated. And these are the world's greatest athletes. And football player after football player on team after team is getting sick with COVID. But they're vaccinated. And I don't get it. And still... The president's going to say millions could die this winter without the vaccine. Oh, thanks for commenting on that. I, I'm just so frustrated. So let's talk about a story that's getting no coverage except for from Jihad Watch, your site. There's this group, this Iswat terrorist group that every week in Nigeria and in the surrounding territories seems to be slaughtering Christians. They surround churches as the Christians are uh, worshiping. They they kill the men and the women and the children unless they happen to spare somebody to take them away to be soldiers for them under penalty of death if they don't cooperate. Um, they're slaughtering left and right across Africa, uh, various Islamic terror groups. Um, the numbers of Christians are that have been slaughtered are dramatic and going up like a um, like a skyscraper straight to the, to the sun. Why is it that there's no press coverage, it seems, except from Robert Spencer and Jihad Watch? Would the world just watch and do nothing as Christians are slaughtered every week? Yeah, I think that's true. That That's what they're going to do, Barry, nothing. I see this on Twitter all the time. When I post these stories about the Muslim massacres, jihad massacres of Christians in Nigeria, Nigerians, write to me and thank me for covering this and say, nobody in the West is paying any attention to this. And I think it's because here again, as I noted earlier, doesn't fit the narrative. The establishment media has a paradigm, a template for stories revolving around Muslims and Christians. And that is the Muslims are always the victims and the Christians are always white supremacist, racist bigots and aggressors. And if it's a story doesn't fit that paradigm, then it just doesn't exist. And so in Nigeria, you have Muslims who are black murdering Christians who are black, avowedly because of Islamic principles and an Islamic government that is turning a blind eye because it has many people who sympathize with this jihad in the government, but it doesn't fit the paradigm because there's no way you can portray these Christians as being the aggressors and they're not white. So it just down the memory hole, doesn't exist. I, I gotta tell our viewers, the stuff you publish is startling it's horrific and it makes me incredibly sad not only that this mass murder goes on on a, just a regular basis it seems every other day i'm reading an article you post but nobody seems to care yeah. nobody seems to care well another thing is 
the Islamic advocacy groups like CARE that we were discussing before, they've really done a number on us. And it, they've made most Americans assume that you just can't talk about this. You can't discuss jihad terror activity because it would be Islamophobic. And so they don't, it just doesn't exist. You're right. The IOC, which is the um, International uh, Olympic Committee, said in a letter this week that they're canceling international competitions now in countries, host countries, that do not allow Israel to compete. I was shocked when Malaysia would not let uh, Israeli athletes come in for a world championship in their country. Um, this is where the former prime minister once said he was glad to be labeled anti-Semitic. And in the face of that, I'm really shocked. The International Olympic Committee said international sports associations must receive um, written confirmation from the host country. They'll allow every country, including Israel, to participate. And if not, there will not be a competition. What will the majority Muslim countries do now? Not compete or invite the Israelis? Uh, probably some will do a bit of both. The Sharia states, notably the Islamic Republic of Iran, will almost certainly pull out. I would be shocked absolutely to the core were they to say, okay, we'll go ahead and compete with the Israelis. Uh, there are some other states uh, on that level that I would be very surprised to see competing with Israelis, Pakistan, the Taliban, Afghanistan, and so on. But some of the countries in the Abraham Accords, they may well go ahead. Uh, on the other hand, they are under pressure now from the other countries that didn't enter into the Abraham Accords to repudiate them and to return to the Islamic fold. And so we'll have to see how that plays out. I think that probably some will go ahead and compete, but probably more will pull out. Well, we've got the Olympics coming up and a lot of championships after that. It's going to be really interesting to see which side some of these, as you said, majority Muslim countries side with. Robert, tell people how they can learn about what you do and follow your brilliant writings, please. Uh, thanks, Barry. Jihadwatch.org is the only news site about jihad activity in the United States and around the world. And then I'm at JihadWatchRS on Twitter, and there is also a Facebook page. You can also find my author page and all my books on Amazon.com, at least for now. Well said, and I advise all of our listeners around the world who follow ATP, Robert Spencer is not an expert. He is the expert. Please follow him on all of his platforms. You do not want to miss anything he says on a daily basis because the news just keeps coming and he is the guy that puts it out there for you. Again, I want to remind you, if you haven't yet, please send a text message to the number 88202. The message box should just have the word truth in it. When you push send, you'll be signed up for this and all of our episodes absolutely for free, and you'll get them twice a week on your cell phone. Okay, for ATP Report, thanks for coming on to watch us today. I'm Bernie Newsbaum.